做做到某个程度，然后呢，可能学到一些东西，然后呢，但可能不一定很成功，但是在别的国家或别的地方，然后怎么样继续接力下去？所以就请呃拍手的这个，请对，谢谢，谢谢。Uh, may I take the?、Uh, can I use the the what the stick mic? May I use this? sure. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, great. You guys can hear me okay? Uh huh. Great. I have stickers. Stickers are always the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, and and thanks to all of you for coming here. I know it's been a a long day already.、Um, huge, huge thanks to CL. And all of the folks who put this together, like 90 volunteers here today, could we get a round of applause for all the pink shirt people? <laughs> Extraordinary work, people! This is an amazing conference. So my name is Chris Doten. As as mentioned, I'm with NDI,、uh, the National Democratic Institute. And you guys yell at me if I'm talking too fast.、Um, we、uh, it's the worst name ever. We're not national. We're international. We're not democratic. We're nonpartisan.、Um, <laughs> So, but we work in about 60 countries around the world to support、uh, civil society groups, political parties, legislatures, as they try and、uh, build more open, responsive societies for for their people. And over the last few years,、um, civic technology has become a really important part of that. Now, there's a bunch of things that you guys all understand already. Everyone is getting connected in a way that's one of the biggest societal shifts in history. Uh, it's really extraordinary, and with that, the everyday lives of people are changing. Thanks to people having a computer in their pocket,、uh, they are connected to each other in a way that they never have been before. But、uh, in my time with NDI,、uh, we keep seeing a lot of the same problems occurring, and so, to a certain extent, I would say that the promise of civic technology has not been fulfilled. Uh, in the, the the actual lives of citizens around the world, so we want to talk a little bit about that today. Now, we've as we were mentioning earlier this morning, Felipe had a great talk where he discussed how、um, technology is helping people come together and organize and protest, and you can bring things down, but it's really hard to move from protest, as he said, to policy. And then build stuff up again. So that's one one big failure, a significant failure that we've been seeing in this civic technology space. And it's partly because really important institutions, governments,、uh, civil society groups, political parties, they're not keeping up. They don't have the money to pay for expensive commercial products. They don't have the staff. To manage sophisticated technology programs, and so they end up getting left behind in this process. And without these really important、uh, groups in the middle being empowered by new civic technology, their societies suffer. And sometimes, really bad groups are empowered. <laughs> Not everybody is bad at social media. There's some very non-civil civil society groups that are. Um, doing a good job of organizing, and advocating, and they're filling a gap that's left behind. So, there's three big problems that that I've seen in my time with NDI. Commercial solutions are usually not out there for the developing world. Either they're too expensive, or they just don't exist at all.、Um, software hasn't been built with the needs of political institutions, especially in the developing world, in mind. And then finally.、Uh, We're all a bunch of geeks here, but open source software is a little bit too hard for most groups to actually use on their own, unaided. So we're going to talk through that a little bit today. Now, it's not that there aren't good technologies out there; it's just that they're not accessible to most of the groups、uh, in, especially across the developing world, in the United States, Europe, in Taiwan, in. Rich and sophisticated places, you can buy this stuff. Political technology is a multi-billion-dollar industry, so there's a lot of money out there for it. But they're not focusing on the developing world. Now, NDI、uh, works with civic groups. We work with political groups. We work with open source、uh, groups, and so we've seen this huge problem, and we're trying. In a small way to try and bridge that that gap. So、um, our our attempt to try and wrestle with some of these problems to help these groups that have been left behind 
is uh, something we're calling dumb tools or our democracy toolkit. We're working with existing open source communities, uh, including my society, we've got Jen here today, um, and some other wonderful groups that have built powerful civic tech uh, solutions, and then we're trying to help adapt them and, and share them and distribute them more broadly to these, these groups around the world who can benefit from them. So some of these NDI has built in-house. Uh, some of them we work with groups like my society to improve them for the needs of political institutions in the developing world. Um, internationalization and then localization. All of these are, exist in French, English, Spanish, and Russian. If anybody wants to volunteer to help with the Chinese, I would be delighted. Um, trying to make them so they work properly on the, the mobile phones that everybody has in their pocket. Making them mobile responsive. To the extent possible, working on um, accessibility for people with disabilities and trying to, to make them work a little bit better for that. And so, you know, that's great. It's all open source. The stuff that we've built is on our GitHub repository. Anything we've done to modify other platforms up there as well with pointers to organizations like my society who built the original stuff. Uh, and so, that's great. Mission accomplished? We don't really think so. We sometimes say that open source technology is free, but that's only true if your time has no value. It's sort of like a free puppy. <laughs> it's not actually the cost of the dog that's the problem. You have to care for it and feed it over years. And uh, I'm sorry to say that, you know, we all love this stuff, but if you are a political organizer, uh, if you are a human rights lawyer in Zimbabwe, you did not get that job as a way to learn Linux. You are not the right sort of person to manage a web application. And it's probably true uh, here in Taiwan, too. It's certainly true in the US. Most small civic organizations, most, most political leaders, they don't have technologists on hand. And so it ends up not working over the long term. I personally have seen so many examples where we work with a group over a couple of years. And in that time, we can move technology along. And then after the program ends, it all stops, it all breaks. Uh, one example, we were doing some work with a human rights monitoring group in Burma. Uh, I went back to visit their site recently, and the home page had been replaced to a picture of a demon with a pitchfork. <laughs> Now, either their work had changed a lot, and they were now doing different things, or they got hacked, because it's really hard to manage this stuff on your own. Now, in the international development world, it's even worse, because we keep solving the same problem. It's a, um, a collective action problem. Uh, it is easier and cheaper for one program to solve their problem for themselves than it is to spend two times as much or three times as much money and solve it in a general sort of way. So with, with Dumb Tools, we've been trying to identify these common solutions by great groups like My Society and New Civic that solve common problems and then build on them and work on them over time. Now, the problem th is huge. Um, so every politician has 87,000 something names in it. Every one of those people would be better off if they were in good contact with their constituents. There are hundreds of thousands of political parties in the world. Nobody knows how many civic groups there are, but there are hundreds of millions. And so on some level, we are all failing at this because we are not reaching nearly enough people. And so, this is sort of a plea for the donor community, but they're funding the wrong stuff. 
they need to fund infrastructure that can reach this sort of scale. Because it's the 21st century, it's 2016. Stuff, software can be cheap. If you solve a problem for five people or 10 people, it really isn't any harder or more expensive to solve it for uh, 5,000 or 100,000. And so with, with them tools, we've created a software as a service hosting platform for each of these six web applications. Uh, so we can scale this to any number of organizations that could use them around the world. At the same time, groups are out under increasing threat. It's, there are, uh, nation states are recognizing that these are real problems, that the, uh, the, civic, the same sorts of civic movements that power new revolutions in Arab Spring are a threat to a lot of governments. And so they are cracking down with cyber laws, uh, targeted hacking, denial of service attacks, that even if you can run your own web server, you cannot face off against, say, the Russians in a denial of service attack. And frankly, NDI can't either. So for our, you need to end up working with people who are bigger and stronger. So NDI works a lot with Amazon Web Services. They've been great for hosting. We can use their very inexpensive, scalable cloud infrastructure. And Cloudflare is a uh, content distribution network which can be used for, um, for protecting against denial of service attacks and other things to help keep these, these organizations safe. So I'm going to very quickly run through the six tools we have. But um, this, is, it's, this is as much a framework um, as it is these individual tools. We had different ones last year. We will probably add some in the future, take some away. And today, I have learned about several really good uh, systems, good civic technology, that also probably could benefit from being hosted on a software as a service platform. So I'll do a quick intro, and then happy afterwards to talk with any of you who might want to be interested in using any of them. So we live in a very polarized, partisan world, and people often do not know which politicians really actually have policies that they find most useful or interesting. This is in many ways the same problem that, uh, that uh, Vox is working on with trying to put out uh, the uh, platforms. We're working with, um, take in sort of like YouTube Town Hall, if any of you remember that, citizens ask questions, they get voted up or down, Top questions get answered by political candidates in short videos. Best example that we've had for this is in Belarus. Not a very open media environment in <laughs> Belarus. And so the political parties use this as a way to share their, view, their policies and their answers to pressing citizen problems directly with the voters. NDI works uh, a lot with civic groups that monitor elections. And so this I, t I will talk about for elections, but really it's for any sort of political processes that you might want to monitor, maybe in a legislature, um, or for any type of structured data that you want to collect. We have a system called elections that this is built in-house by NDI with uh, a team of Nigerian developers. It's used for structured data collection from forms submitted via SMS or smartphone application and then analyzed and processed to let people know whether their elections were free and fair at the end of the day. Um, every single civic organization is, going, is better if they know who their people are and if they can communicate with them easily. So we've built on a popular open source CRM or customer relationship management system called Civi to tailor it for the needs of typical political parties, 
members of parliament and uh, civil society organizations. So this lets them know their people, target them, send them blast text messages, emails, track their history over time. This is by far the most popular of our dem tools, by the way. There's about 100 um, political parties or civic groups using this uh, today. Um, so another common issue, people have problems with infrastructure, with services in their neighborhood, and they want to share them. Thanks to my society, there's a wonderful program called Fix My Street. We've readapted it as uh, Fix My Community uh, that lets citizens report problems in their own neighborhood. Maybe it's the, uh, the classic pothole. Uh, maybe it's the teachers didn't show up. Uh, or maybe it's something like I paid a bribe where people are reporting on, on problems that they've seen. But it lets them share those, those challenges with government entities who then can try and fix them. And then the citizens know what's happening with that. All right, one of the oldest ways of engaging with government goes way back to ancient China, ancient Egypt, is the idea of the petition. And so you've taken and adapted that classic idea for an online world with the, the petitions dem tool. This is based on We the People which is a, uh, a project of the United States government that's a petition uh, platform. It's a little bit like change.org. And so with petitions, a civic organization who wants to serve as a bridge, or a local government, or a legislature, can, uh, can uh, citizens can post petitions for them, generate uh, support, get signatures, and if it reaches a certain level, then it gets a governmental response, an official response. All right, and then finally, uh, there was a, a great talk earlier today about data. Um, and one of the things I love from that is like, open data is not the point. The point is to change policy. And the uh, very few of us really understand spreadsheets. I don't understand spreadsheets. <laughs> So what do you do? You take your information and you try and tell stories using your data. Uh, there's a system called DCAN. Don't ask me what it stands for. It doesn't really stand for anything. <laughs> uh, built by a wonderful group called New Civic. And it's an open data warehouse for storing spreadsheets that become open data. But I think more importantly, it's a way to use maps and graphs and charts to do data-driven storytelling, to take your data and open it up in a way that citizens can really understand. So those are the tools that we've got here in May of 2016. This is a big experiment for NDI. I'm not really sure if this is gonna succeed, uh, but we think that the need is huge, that that the civic tech community is building great stuff, but that the commercial sector is not providing what is needed and open source doesn't fill the bill for most civic groups. So I uh, would love to get any of your thoughts uh, on how we can improve this going forward. If you have civic or political groups that think that any of these would be useful, let me know. We can turn on a copy for you. If any of you would like to um, add tools to this suite, great. If any of you can help with translation, especially in the Chinese, that would be wonderful. So lots of ways for people to contribute and we'd love to get your, your help and support. And hopefully we can take the promise of civic tech and bring it to the next million organizations that need it out there in the future. So thank you all very much. It uh, reminds me a lot of the uh, great American experiment about democracy 200 years ago, except this one is a great internet <laughs> experiment. Uh, we have just one question okay. from, the, from the internet. 
Uh, so basically, you, you say you, you want to scale out and replicate right. technology in different places, but it requires uh, a lot of cooperation with the domain knowledge yeah. experts. Yeah. But you talk about uh, the procedure and policy, but you did not actually take a lot about the, the power structure of the local community, how you actually work with them. So can you elaborate on a little bit? So how do you actually work with the local community? Because we've seen all kinds of different places, actually completely different. How do you actually work with them? Thanks. Good question. So, it is true that every It is true that every civic organization is a unique and special flower, but they all have some of the same problems, right? They all need to track people. They all want to tell stories using their data, and so, on the one hand, you try and find what is the most common issues out there. What are the most common issues out there?、Um, so, with NDI working with hundreds of Uh, civic and political groups over decades, we've seen a lot of these things kind of emerge, and so the solutions that, that I've showed you here today are ones that we think hit most common sorts of needs. Now, it's all because it's all open source. If it doesn't work quite right in a particular context, that's fine. You know, take it, fix it, improve it, evolve it over time, and try and build something that does work better for、um, the needs of. That particular organization.、Um, so the the question uses is talking about partly about about scale here. So so on that, if you want to hit scale, you can't build a hundred different things that are all special and unique, right? Like Google has solved email for many many people because they figured out a good way that works for most folks. It used to be five ten years ago, everybody ran their own mail server. Nobody runs their mail server anymore. So we have to think about those sorts of levels. We have a, a, a technology, the, a Dem Tools technology manager, who likes to talk about the difference between pets and cattle. Okay, a pet is some is one one unique thing、uh, that you care for and you love, and it's special, and it's you have to treat it in a special sort of way. That's the way that many civic tech problems are being solved today. You build. Another version, or you stand it up and run it yourself, but it's it's a pet.、Um, we need to be able to think about scale, and therefore we need to think think about how to treat them like cattle. How can we herd a thousand websites in the same direction at the same time, inexpensively and easily?、Um, because that's the only way that we're going to get to the impact that I think that that the world needs. So instead of、uh, free puppies, you want free Stony eyeballs. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So,、uh, any questions from the audience? Are you ready to answer some questions? Okay. 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 Okay.